I'm getting tired of saying this. <laughs> <laughs> you already know what I'm going to say. <laughs> yes. What I am do. I going to say? It's been so long it's since been we recorded. It's been so long since we've recorded. Yeah, it's it been has. like a month since we've done this, but it feels good to be back, especially with everything that happened last week. Oh, oh yeah. Big, big week. Last yeah, week. yeah, yeah. The History Channel. Yes. The frickin- now this is gonna come out months in advance, so we'll we'll save that conversation for yeah. the one that'll come out. Yep. Yeah, crazy stuff's been going on, and it, it just feels so good to record. Up front, I want to let you know now. Spoiler alert: We're going to talk about Akira. Mm-hmm. It is this uh, prolific cult classic Japanese film from 1988. And for some strange reason, I never watched it until last month <laughs> when Nick shows up at my house with the DVD and he's like, Blu-ray. Blu-ray. My bad. Steel book. Okay. Steel book. <laughs> Chromebook. MacBook. <laughs> he's, he's, he's spitting. I mean, you know. Chromebook. MacBook. That's, that's all I got. But he, he shows up. He's like, we, we were watching this tonight. I really yeah. didn't have a choice. And I was like, all right, fine. I've heard about it for so many years. I already knew that like, you know, major pop stars and, and people were like, into it, you know, culturally. Oh, I knew yeah. It was a big deal. I knew the, the atmosphere around it. I just, for some reason, never felt inclined to watch it. And then we watched it. <laughs> and So, I mean, you were, like, moderately... Aware excited, yeah. of the phenomenon, but I just never right. was, like... I was like, I'll watch it someday. You know what I mean? Genuinely, what was, like, your impression of what the movie was prior to having seen it? Like, pr- prior to seeing it? I knew that it was just going to be some film with, like, a dude... Like mute, I had seen one clip of Tetsuo like mutating towards the end. Mm-hmm. When you know, like his arm gets cut off and he's like growing all this stuff. And like I had seen some visuals, but I was like, oh, it just looks like a weird, like old movie with mutant monsters blowing up a city. Like I didn't have any like, clue what it, it was about. Yeah, like maybe some kind of like cosmic horror type. Maybe. I had no clue. That's I literally was like, okay, yeah, there's gonna be some like superpower freak, <laughs> and I knew there were bikes in it. That's right. literally all I knew. Yeah, because a lot of the the like uh, iconic moments that you see all the time uh, from the movie are like the bike shots, right? You know, like the there's this really um, the most iconic, arguably the most iconic scene in the movie is just a simple like slide on a bike. He just slides on his little. It's like a cyberpunk futuristic kind of movie, and they have these cool like Tron style light yeah. bikes and like computer chips in the. So- that uh, that move's called a power slide. Oh, it, power slide. Yep. Thanks, sportsman. Well, well, that. <laughs> 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 Thank you, sportsman. Thank you, sportsman. No, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's cool because that scene was iconic, and I guess it was one of the first times, if not the first time, it's ever been animated or done on film or whatever. And uh, you know, as you were breaking it down for me, showing me video compilations, it's been replicated like dozens of times oh yeah even in live action movies now super cool super iconic and i went into it thinking like it's gonna be a biker movie you know like, yeah that's like why i was does. saying that because a lot of people before seeing akira they think like oh it's like a futuristic biker movie in japan so why are we talking about this movie before we get into the plot and like the symbolism behind it after watching that movie i dreamed about it for three days <laughs> or three nights you know yeah, yeah and like i walked away from this film feeling the most overwhelming level of um profound revelation from a film Mm. you know in the likes of 2001 a space odyssey or the matrix Matrix, i feel like i feel like this film deserves to be placed on that shelf you know and let's think real quick about what do those three movies have in common they are referenced everywhere right they are referenced everywhere if you don't know um Kanye West has that music video Stronger, right? I think so. The whole thing is an Akira Akira reference. The whole thing. You know, it's like, and then there are, like we said, the slide is referenced in dozens. It's so. Well, dude, we saw the new Ninja Turtles last night. Remember? They had a DVD of Akira. Yeah. Towards the end of the movie, one of the characters was like, I can finally get caught up. I have the box set of Akira. Was it the DVD or was it the manga? I I couldn't tell from from the thing, but it, it, it was one of them. And me and Ryan literally looked at each other like, what we're doing an episode about this tomorrow well that was especially weird because i watched it yesterday oh that's I, right I you rewatched it the it. day of you rewatched yeah, for the it. second time and yeah. then it was on that movie i was like whoa major synchronicity yeah that's not something that for, for that to be referenced in that movie just goes to show how uh how how ubiquitous it is absolutely culturally it's, it's everywhere it's like underground but it's really not and it's you know it's almost 50 years it's 40 years old right you know it's an old movie 
and it's still as relevant and iconic as ever. Uh, little like teaser, the reason that we have to talk about this movie is there are a lot of parallels in Akira to what is happening in the world today right. and what is happening with the Bledsoe's. It honestly relates to the <laughs> Bledsoe's story uh, in, in a wild way. I've been telling my wife for a few weeks now, and, and, and she's like, my wife is the type. Like, she will happily, if I'm like, you got to come watch this movie with me, she's like, okay. Yeah. But she's not into anime. She doesn't she doesn't get into this stuff. She likes what she likes. I like what I like. That's and called being a good partner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I've been I've been trying to, like, hype her up on watching it. Of course, naturally, we watched it yesterday, and she, like, falls asleep. It's like, whatever. <laughs> she, you know, tried. Fun. she tried. But, but I've been telling her for weeks to hype her up. I'm like, Jenny, my dad is the real Akira. <laughs> like you know with what's happening with him and the science and like the brain scan and like anyway so let's get into it so yes. the movie yeah um where do we even begin well it starts off you know remember this movie was made in like the late 80s or like mid to late 80s but it's like set in the quote unquote future right i don't remember the 2019. exact 2019 yeah okay 2019 july 16th which is hilarious 2019 like you know but uh it, so it's like this this futuristic kind dystopia. of dystopia it's pretty dystopian and at the beginning I, i'd say like the first 20 30 minutes of the movie it's just like this kind of street kid i mean he's probably maybe early 20s maybe like late no they're teen. in high school Oh, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. They're, they're like 14, 15. Right. They're, they're, they're teenagers in high school, but they're in this violent biker gang. Like killing people at night with yeah. crowbars, beating them to death. And, and then like- It's a gritty, violent movie. Oh, for sure. For sure. And they're participating in like full-fledged gang fights. <laughs> like, like, you know, it's- They're literally bashing heads in. Yeah. With like crowbars and, and like <laughs> wrenches and stuff. Uh, and some of the action sequences are just like so- like beautifully done and it's all very like hype the energy super high and you're thinking like oh i could watch a movie about this this seems cool or whatever and uh yeah it, for the first 20 30 minutes it's just that and then this really significant thing happens that changes the entire course of the movie where the main one of the main characters Kaneda. It, Kaneda's the one that rides the bike. Yeah. Okay. Tetsuo's I, I the... always get Tetsuo and Kaneda confused right, because they right. shout each other's names. Uh -huh. You know? The whole time. <laughs> the whole movie. Tetsuo! Kaneda! <laughs> That's us, dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, so Kaneda is like, you know, there, there's like this high speed gang fight that's happening like while they're barreling down a road. It's like really mm -hmm. intense and all this stuff. And then um, Tetsuo is on another bike following Kaneda, they're like riding through the streets, all this stuff. Or maybe maybe Tetsuo took Kaneda's bike or something like that. I don't remember. Not yet. Oh, right, right. But at, at any rate, Tetsuo, who is Kaneda's like like buddy slash kind of rival sort of thing. Yeah, like his little lackey kind of. Yeah, yeah. Like they're, they're in the same gang, I think. They, yeah. they like ride together or whatever. Tetsuo is barreling down the street after this like high speed uh, violent fight. And he looks up into the road, and there is this, like, weird little gray kid. It's like a little boy, but he looks, like, 100 years old in the face, and his skin is, like, blue and gray. Like, it reminds me of, like, Haunted Mansion, like, from Disney. Yeah. Like, the ghosts, how, how they have that color to them. Exactly. It looks like that. It's like this weird little zombie-looking kid or something. Yeah. It's like, it's like a weird little gray kid. And he's, like, very close. You're like, oh, Tetsuo is about to slam into this kid. And before the kid throws his hands up and Tetsuo's bike explodes and mm -hmm. Tetsuo goes flying and you're like, oh, he just smashed that kid. He, that kid is dead. And then the smoke clears and the kid sits standing there. Yep. And you're like, and then the army shows up <laughs> and like, there's this little psychic warfare situation where like this other little gray, ugly looking kid <laughs> speaks to him in his mind. And it, you find out like, oh, there's like a psychic weird secret government element to this and the army snatches him up and they take the kid tetsuo and they they go to some secret facility yeah that's like your first little hint to like what this movie's actually gonna yeah, be about it's, it's about to be deeper than just yeah. you know crowbars and yeah. bikes yeah. <laughs> this kid this little weird kid gets like this message in his head from someone else and then yeah these like government agents or military or whatever yeah they snatch him up and they snatch tetsuo as well and so that that right there tells you like it's almost like some Stranger Things type definitely like you know that's what I the mean? vibe I got with Stranger Things mm -hmm. like with Eleven and the Psychic Awakening thing okay so 
without getting too much into the mundane parts of the movie that aren't necessarily like esoterically profound because th there's still dialogue setting up like, oh, you know, going back to school the next day and, you know, them having their little normal slice of life parts. But um, so essentially what happens next is the kid Canada and all the rest of the biker gang, they get arrested. They get taken to the police station. They're questioned. They're given an alibi. You know, the government's like, here's their alibi. Let them loose. And they're like, where's Tetsuo? He's in this facility, you know? And I believe Tetsuo escapes. Right. Remember, he climbs yeah. out of the window. He escapes. He goes back to the school. He steals the bike. Okay, that's when he steals the bike. They that's all right. see out the school window. Like, he's got the bike. They run off. They chase him, get in a fight. Long story short, in this moment, uh, Tetsuo starts having this sort of awakening where he starts hearing a voice in his head that's saying, Akira. Akira. Akira, you know? And he's, like, having these hallucinations. He's, like... We see this, but nobody else around him sees this. His guts are falling out on the ground. Yeah. And like earthquake is splitting open the land and he's having all these insane visuals with this voice popping up in his head. And it's and like, like visions, pictures flashing in his mind. It's, it's like, like a nauseating scene. It's like it's like kind of body horror. Yeah. And, and I mean, you see all this happening in his mind and then it shows what's really happening. And he's like grabbing his head and screaming like it's obviously a torturous thing that he's going through. And it's some sort of like crazy psychic phenomenon. Who knows exactly what's happening in this moment? But like something very significant is obviously. So the army happening. comes and gets him again. Uh -huh. And I actually wrote this down. I thought this was so interesting. And when I first heard this line in the movie, when I watched it with you that night, I was like, oh my God, it's like that. <laughs> you know, but um, the army gets him again. They're kind of like rushing him back to the facility. And you remember in the movie, there's a main. Not a main, but like a major character that looks like Einstein. Oh, yeah. He, he's got the hair exactly like Einstein. and Mustache and, and everything. Yes. And what I love about this movie is it has a whole other element that we haven't even mentioned yet is the government has like a top secret scientist uh, researcher dude with all this like fringe paranormal science. Right. They're like he has these high tech computers that are like crunching numbers of like spiritual energy signals and stuff like that, you know? Right. That's right. Yeah. He, he, uh, oh, let's real quick, let's pause for a second. Head back. The movie starts with. Oh, we didn't even. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Like one of the first things that you see it's in the, the movie very first thing is, you see is Tokyo like exploding. And in, in a, in a, like a nuclear detonation. It says yeah. 1988, July 16th, Tokyo, nuclear detonation. And then the, the, the text is like 30 years later after World War Three. Right. You know, 31 right, right, years right. later. And, yeah. and I can't believe we forgot. Yeah. To that's like that. the most important part. Yeah. And it's, it's 2019. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's like post World War Three because of a nuclear detonation. Yeah. Basically, they assumed when this detonation went off in Tokyo, it was a nuke and it started World War Three. Right. You know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone in the world just thought it was a nuke. The, and this is why the world is so like gritty and dystopian. Yeah. And so much violence, civil unrest. There's riots. There's things getting burned down and the military shooting them down mm -hmm. while all this stuff is happening. OK, so I thought this was interesting when they're walking the second time when they get Tetsuo and they bring him back and they put him in that big machine with all the like spinning equipment that's like replicated in that Kanye West music video. Yeah. They, remember? they, the, the government captures Tetsuo again, again, and they start experimenting on him yes. because he's obviously having some kind of psychic awakening. Right. And the viewer is now being made aware of this. Exactly. And, and the, when they're walking to the facility, the second time getting Tetsuo, the scientist tells the general, he's not a general. I wrote general. He's a Colonel. Mm. Another important element. The scientist tells the Colonel, a young research. This is this is like quoted dialogue from the movie. A young researcher said the other day that he believes this power is the next step in the evolution of humankind, and that someday we may all be able to control it. And then they're walking through, and they start talking more about this Akira. They're like, in in this part, they're like, we we cannot allow what happened to Akira um, to happen to Tetsuo. That energy signal right. is something that we can't control. The the general or the you know the colonel guy was like. You know, we need to kill him if it goes too far. But the scientist's like, I want to study it. I, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to explore this friend science. You know, yeah. they walk outside, and there's a group of fanatics on the street who have written in in um, what's what's the Japanese symbol Is called? It kanji? kanji. Kanji. Is it kanji? I think they yeah. have kanji on the street, and it's like Lord Akira the Enlightened. The Akira day of will awakening. return. Akira will return. The day of awakening comes. Yeah. And as the viewer, you're like. 
what's happening? <laughs> yeah. You know, like who is Akira? Yeah, like, this it, is deep because it still hasn't explicitly said in the movie who or what Akira You've is. You've just heard his name a couple times. Yeah, and then at this point, they're really talking about him. There's like yeah, like religious fanatics in the street worshiping this Akira figure. Like, like, but what I got immediately was Age of Aquarius symbolism. Well, you because know? the fanatics that were in the streets worshiping him had like crystal beads. Yeah, and they were doing like they were uh, like praying and you know like yeah doing mudras and stuff right. like like doing meditation stuff so it was all like very new age symbolism about this akira that they're worshiping which is significant right it is significant yeah uh, to me the themes were like new age of awakening approaching okay so then as, as things are going forward you, it cuts to like tetsuo being in his room and he starts majorly awakening to where like remember the other <laughs> little site so, so you find out to, to explain like the reality of what's happening here there has been a secret government facility where they've had these three little kids who are like super old, but somehow they're preserved through their psychic abilities. Are they actually old? I mean, I'm they, pretty sure. Okay. I, I always assumed they looked like that because of maybe like the experimentation or something. I don't know if it says in the movie. I, I'm I, not sure. I don't know. I just assumed they were, had, had lived a long time. It, it, it doesn't matter. The point right, is right. they're like, they, they, they are, uh, psychically, they're, they're starting to reveal their psychic abilities, you know, like they, they approach Tetsuo in his room and like reality starts falling apart. You start to have these scenes where your perspective as the viewer is tied to Tetsuo's perspective, which is like all hallucination. Oh yeah. I mean, at this point, Tetsuo is like fully, he's like had a psychic break. Like, uh, like he's seeing things that are not real constantly right. little teddy bears in his room will become giant and like you know do like all the things and like try to eat him and stuff like really shocking scary imagery like he's being tortured right he's being psychically tortured tetsuo is is going through it and then amidst all this happening we cut to a scene where this colonel figure is starting to be like kind of approached by like I don't want to say secret society type because it doesn't give that symbolism of like some sort of ritual elite like Evangelion did, but it was more like the money elite, you know, yes. like a, a small inner circle of extremely wealthy figures who like are giving commands to the military. Yeah. It's like where Evangelion is very explicit about it. Like they're it, it's they, like ritual occult stuff. Yeah. The Akira is more subtle about yeah. it. They just mention that there's some elites and they're kind of calling the shots and that's about all we And know. they're money people. Right. You know? That's there, where the there, money there's comes no, from. There's no, like a, there's no cult-like symbolism there. But they're like in charge and they're like yeah. trying to shut it down. And what I thought was interesting was before it showed this group of elites, I don't know if you remember, but it flashed a golden Greek god statue. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. What? I don't remember what god or goddess it was. I don't remember, but the symbolism is like, it's like the gods. It's like the mystery school, you know? Like, uh -huh. I believe that the director is showing you, it was a quick flash of this Greek god statue, and then it was like in the room with these elite people. It's like very subtle, like, there's a connection here, you know, between the mystery schools and the hidden hand, the elites at the top. Oh, yeah, and, absolutely. I mean, anybody who is like deep in these occult studies and like mystic traditions, the the mythologies of Earth's history, like they're describing this sort of psychic phenomenon, right? The cycle of the soul, like the the real deep spirituality stuff. So anybody who knows their stuff about occult symbolism, mythology and like gods in mythology are very important symbols to telling this story of consciousness. Right, right. From a director standpoint, I believe flashing that symbol is placing that imagery subconsciously in the mind it's like it's like what evangelion did with all the religious all the like right, crosses right. And, yeah it's same thing yeah yeah so as as it progresses you know tetsuo begins to awaken more we still don't quite know what akira is yet mm -mm. but he mm -mm. keeps talking about like i want to find akira and they're like how do you know about that well mm -hmm. you know he's been psychically communicating to him we know this the viewer knows this everybody else around is like no we can't have that happen <laughs> yeah like yeah. kill this boy yeah you know the whole army's coming after him yeah tetsuo kind of makes it his mission to find akira right because he keeps getting all of these messages in his head akira 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 he doesn't know what it's about he's seen all these flashes he knows it's significant and I think he is thinking at this point, like, if I can find Akira, I can figure out what's going on with me. 
You know what I mean? Like, right. Because he's going through complete torture and turmoil, and he just wants an answer. He just wants to find out what is going on. The only lead he has is Akira, Akira, Akira. So he like makes it his mission at any cost to find Akira. So I had just pulled up another thing, but um, it was important to mention that while the religious group outside was like wanting the return of Akira, Mm -hmm. saying, you know, the Lord of Enlightenment, the day of awakening draws near. um, Simultaneously, that secret group with the military uh, colonel guy in charge of researching the psychic stuff uh, on behalf of the army meeting with these elites, they were having a conversation. If this happens, it'll be the end of the world. We have to shut this down at all costs, neutralize the threats. It's like, stop it. Stop the awakening. That was the general military premise. It was like, do not allow this to happen. What's it sound like? You, yeah. Real life and the phenomenon. And, and, and also, what does the military colonel sound like? Colonel John B. Alexander. <laughs> yeah. Who has, on behalf of the United, not that he's a bad guy. I'm just saying thematically, it's a little spooky on the nose. Like, Colonel John Alexander, who is a good friend of my dad's, he's literally, for the last, like, 50-plus years, has been tasked by the United States military to study the fringe and the paranormal. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, he, he is that guy. He yeah. is the real life that guy. Yeah. And, I mean, we also know at this point, you know, current, modern times, it's like there is obvious uh, pushback from, like, military, government, stuff like that. I mean— they are trying to spin this whole UFO phenomenon thing into scary, it's stay end. away from it's it, negative. it's the end times. Right, right. You have very much the same thing happening in Acura. It's the same exact thing. They're like, no, everything's going to go wrong if this continues. We cannot let him reach awakening, blah, blah, blah. But they're being real, real sly about it. They're, especially to the viewer. Uh, you know, Speaking about the director's choices... The director, like, you really don't know what's going on. Until the, vi- until the, the bitter very, end. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah like, the very end of the movie. In the best way. Yeah, no. The that, way it unfolds it, is exciting. Exactly, because it keeps you engaged and interested. You, like, when you're watching this movie, you have to know what's going on. You, you're like, I yeah. have to keep like, watching. this is insane. What's happening? Right. Yeah. You're I, picking up pieces as it goes along, but you don't get it until the end. At this point, Tetsuo is, like, in some level of psychic ability where like they're shooting bullets at him it's full on like matrix mode like stopping bullets you know crushing tanks like he's very powerful he's he's awakened far past those three little kids oh yeah who they can like astral project a little bit and like channel through there was a scene where you know that girl that the other character Canada liked mm-hmm. the like the spy girl yeah and he anyway there was a scene where like one of the little kids channeled through her and sort of like possessed right. her and spoke through her and right there, there were some things that they could do like precognitive abilities they were seeing the future through their dreams and- well then and also you know what started all of this was tetsuo crashing into the kid you find out the kid actually put up like a freaking force field right and stopped the bike from hitting him worth mentioning i forgot to say this too in the beginning when they first bring him to the facility after that that crash the scientist says Basically, like, I believe it was the shock of his contact with subject number 26 that caused him to awaken. Right. Throughout the movie, they keep saying, awaken, awaken, awaken. And you're like, okay, like, I know what that means. Like, you know, especially us, we're (laughs) watching it together and we've done a hundred plus episodes of BSS together. We're like, we know what this means. Right. I still didn't think it was going to go that far. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, okay, cool. This is about awakening. Cool. So Tetsuo is awakening and they keep, you know, showing the scientist is crunching numbers on his computer. The charts are spiking, you know, like in, <laughs> yeah. in their little animated style. And it's like, oh, cool. Like, and, and there's always these scenes where the scientist's face is like, I don't understand. You know, he's got this energy signature that's similar to Akira. And it takes this little CGI rendered chart graph of like his psychic energy. <laughs> but then it shows a little flash of Akira's and it's like this massive dome of energy. Yeah. That and dwarfs the other one. It's, that it's, you're, it's, yeah. it's huge. And they're like, you know, uh, Tetsuo's is like this little tiny circle and Akira's is like infinitely bigger. And, yeah. and they're like, we can't let him awaken to this level or, or it'll be out of our control. But, and then the scientist is like, I have to, I have to like gain control. Like I have to see, you know, right. there's this dichotomy going. So anyway, Tetsuo is awakening. He's searching for Akira. He's rampaging through the city at this point. <laughs> you know? Yeah, because his powers have, his like psychic powers have reached a point 
where he can destroy things very, very, very easily. They're like targeting with satellite lasers. And yeah. He's like flying out to space and blowing them up. He's and- full like super villain mode right now, like superhero slash villain mode right now. Right. Like, which full. that was a cool plot twist too. Yeah. He was the villain. Yeah. You find out the main kid is the villain, yeah. which was like, whoa, that's, that's a cool choice. You know, you don't yeah. expect it. So, um, I guess we should just get in into like what Akira is, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. It, see, it seems about time to, to go ahead and do that. So Akira, remember, the beginning of the movie, you see the big explosion, and you're like, oh, wow, it was a nuke. A nuke went off, started World War III. What, you know, what's, what's going on with that? Whatever. Well, around this point where we're at so far in the movie, they begin to slowly show you uh, like pictures, images. They introduce it in the dialogue. You find out Akira is, in fact, a person. And then you find out that Akira was, like, the first kind of, like, guinea pig. One of those subjects. Exactly. Like, like the, the little psychic kids. Like the little psychic kids. In 1988. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. In 1988, which is when that big explosion at the beginning of the movie happened. Right. So if you're really perceptive, you can start to piece it together before they fully, well, like— Plus the energy on, on the chart that it showed in the very beginning— but you, you're not aware of the. It, it was it was exactly that. It looked like yes. that explosion. Yes. Yeah, yes. You, you may miss that. There's lots of little hints and little things where you're like, you might miss it. And I only caught that because I watched it the second time. You yeah. know, like you have you don't know what to look for. Yeah. So yeah, you find out Akira was the first one of those kids, and he had this like this completely off the charts innate psychic ability. And obviously, you know what the government does is they want to get their hands on it. They want to figure out how it works, this, that, the other, whatever. Uh, so they're like doing experiments on this kid. It's, it's like pretty messed up, whatever. But you essentially, you discover that that explosion <laughs> towards the beginning of the movie, that was Akira awakening. awakening. Like reaching full, he awakened to cosmic consciousness. <laughs> like, like full like psychic he, he awakening. He ascended out of the material reality and basically became like a god, like a god consciousness. And and that like transfer of energy resulted in a nuclear explosion. Yeah, well, like like but a but, but really what it did is it just like it, it wasn't even an explosion. It you find out it was like uh, it was like a. It was like a Terran reality that took all uh, that stuff into another reality. That's right. It wasn't even a bomb. That's right. It was Akira awakening and ascending into like cosmic light consciousness. And, and like being pulled into another realm, right. essentially. Like the god of a realm. Yeah, yeah. So, so Tetsuo is at this point hellbent on finding Akira. And you're learning at this point. There is no more Akira. Like, Akira exploded. Akira stopped existing a long time ago. Yeah, and they keep yeah. talking about this figure, and you're like, what? He's not even here. Exactly. It's like this crazy thing. And then, you know, he's hell-bent on finding him, and he ends up finding the facility that did the experiments, and this super, super top-secret uh, discovery is made that there are, like, these little... Vials. Pe- yeah, these little vials with pieces like it's like his organs his, his nerves. eyeballs yeah they 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 somehow came up with this fluid to like preserve his you know his body his vitals Oculus. and they kept them separate in different vials yeah so after the explosion or awakening or whatever you want to call it they what's up alex isn't that similar to the um the story of the guy who got his phallus cut off huh osiris osiris right um, elaborate. Didn't they? Yeah, I'm curious about that. Didn't one. they cut him into a bunch of pieces and put him in the river? Yeah. Is that is that? Uh, I'm, I'm drawing a comparison here. Okay, I'm hold a, up. I can, hold I can up. See that. Okay. Hold up. Now we're so cooking. Tell me what happened with Osiris. Why'd they dice him up? What happened? The, the 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 story of Osiris is he has this. I don't know if he's his brother or if it's just like his eternal rival, but it's Set. Mm-hmm. Set represents like the darkness. Osiris represents the light. He's like Tetsuo and Canada. Kind of, yeah. But like in the myth. Uh, Set dismembers Osiris, chops him up into 14 pieces, 
but that 14th piece is his phallus. A fish eats it. So then Isis, who, you know how mythology goes, it's like his sister, but it's always, it's either his mother or sister, but it's also his wife. It's right. Like, there's some sort of relationship there, but also they're, they're, you know, together. Yeah. And she's like this goddess of magic and, and stuff like that. So she like brings his pieces together. That's where you get this symbolism of Osiris being mummified because he was cut mm. up. He was killed. He was brought together. Then she constructs him a gold a magical pure gold phallus, which is like that's the obelisk. Uh huh. Yes. And dope too. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but but it's really it's really secret symbolism for you know masculine archetypal you know creative energy. Yeah. She brings him back from the dead. That's why Osiris has this phoenix symbolism because he rises from the dead. But it's also symbolic of the soul reincarnating. Oh yeah. Know, being eternal. That's what the ankh means. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah, I could kind of see that. Like she she brings his pieces together and brings them back from the dead. Yeah, I see that parallel. I mean, in the movie... I wouldn't discredit it. No. You know? Uh, especially, we know with these kinds of directors and these kinds of projects, like, they're already packed with such occult symbolism and concepts, and it it only makes sense. I mean, they showed you the Golden God statue. It wasn't, it wasn't like, this is Mercury, or this is, you know, Pluto or, Pluto or Poseidon or whatever. It was just like a Golden God statue, which, to me, is just like... This is mythological symbolism. Right. It may have even it may have even been meant to be vague. Right. Because That's it what just, I'm thinking. it's just the broad concept. It's not like they're not trying to draw you into a specific They're like, not saying this is Kabbalah, this is Hermeticism. They're 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 just saying it's about awakening. Yeah. You know, it's it's about all of it. It's about uh you could you could call it more new age or whatever, but it's it's all it's all connected. And like you start to get into dialogue towards the very end when all this finale is popping off, which we're like kind of in that part now where t you, you find out long story short, Akira's body parts are all separated in these vials, but his, his, his body is preserved, you know, they well, find them. Yeah, yeah. Those parts are preserved. Those pieces. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's in pieces right. like eyeballs, nervous system, organs, yada, yada, yada. And they're and by the way, they, these vials are locked down in the most like gridlock security system on the planet. It's like a ice, like sub zero, like huge hyper security max vault like deep underground yeah like whatever like you, doesn't exist black ops type thing yeah yeah like whatever you can imagine is the most like clandestine like hidden underground like it's like that yeah and tetsuo gets in there pretty easy he just like yeah he just he like, just walks, rips he just it apart everything like, up and, yeah he, and, and finds him and he's like what he's not even a person you know he's like disappointed or whatever right so they're, they're, they're begin at this point there's some dialogue between the scientist and the general mm-hmm Oh, and, and, it, and it should the be... The colonel, I mean. It should be said that at this point, uh, Tetsuo is creating, like, such a ruckus, like, destroying the city that... They're, like, evacuating the entire city. They're evacuating it's the city. They're sending the military after him. I mean, they're trying to kill it's him. It's, like, cataclysmic. Yeah, like, and then also, Kaneda and their other friends are coming after him, too. Right. To try to just, like stop whatever's happening. Like talk sense into him. Or like they, you know, Tetsuo and Kaneda, they like butt heads throughout the whole movie, but you can tell they like really care about each other. They want to take care of each other, but they're like rivals at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, Kaneda's trying to just show up and just stop whatever's happening. He doesn't know what's happening. He's just trying to stop it. He's like, well, if anyone should kill him and in this, it should be me because I'm his friend. Exactly. Not the military. He, like, I would rather do it. He did say he that. He felt responsible yeah. for him. So right. he was he was trying to gun him down with a laser gun, <laughs> yeah. like some secret military laser gun. Yeah. But there, there's some dialogue at this point that I thought was profoundly interesting. I didn't get to finish the movie yesterday because just stuff was happening. And the first time I watched it was about a month ago. So this is from memory. But the dialogue was something to the effect of... They were explaining, I can't remember, I, I believe it was the scientist or it was even the colonel explaining to, might have been Canada, it was just other characters while all this stuff was happening. And it was essentially like, how is this possible? What's happening? What's awakening? And they start going on this rant like, you know, imagine that every, every piece of life that exists today all came from the same infinite energy in the big bang and when that happened you know billions of years ago all of that information has been constantly evolving throughout all life so the knowledge of the original infinite energy of the big bang is encoded within your dna to evolve towards higher cosmic consciousness so it's basically explaining through the dialogue what's happening it's like as above so below and and it's the scientist saying these things right. correct and like, or the current, I can't remember the character. I'm pretty sure it was the scientist, 
And like that's scientifically like backed up. Like in right. our in our DNA is is the entire history of consciousness. Right. Like well, that's, we come from the stars too. Like it, the the physical elements in our body are only possible because of the stars. We are we are quite literally made of star matter. Like yeah. the same things that create everything in the universe create us. As above, so below. Look up in the sky. You see those big crazy ball planets. Like you are the same thing. You're literally made out of the same thing, which is essentially. But also metaphorically, the child. The child of those things, right? Yes, yeah. yes, like absolutely. From, from a scientific perspective, and then there's another layer to this concept of as above, so below, because it's like if if those things are evolving and those things are changing, then we internally are changing and evolving as well. Like as our matter evolves, our consciousness has to yeah. evolve, or our star stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that. The, our star stuff. That's what Carl Sagan said. I believe we're made of star stuff. I love. It's like that. one of his very famous quotes. That's, I'm pretty sure it was Carl Sagan. That's that's too epic. Yeah, and another important thing to mention about this scientist character is like he's technically working on behalf of like the military and the government. Like they've hired him to like. But he's pure. He just wants the exploration. He wants the knowledge. Like he's not a bad guy. Exactly. Like while all of this crazy cataclysm is happening in the middle of Tokyo, he stayed there. Right. He stayed there to study and to see because he's genuinely his major concern is just like getting the data. Like he wants to figure out what we need to do to, to evolve human consciousness. That's why he's there. So there's an interesting parallel there because like what if that's happening in the real world? It is. I know. I just, <laughs> I'm trying to be coy about yeah. it. I, I know. I know. Uh, but well, we're oh. wrapping up. We've got a, a little bit of time left and we're about to end the movie. I was going to get into some of that. Bet. But um, yeah. So stay uh, tuned. So here's the finale. <laughs> yes. Here's the finale. So, okay. So um, Tetsuo starts awakening so much and so rapidly that it's beyond his control and his body, like hit his singular reality starts to break down even like within the collective like now everybody is seeing him morph into this horrific abominable mutant monster which by the way yes he he starts mutating rapidly and becoming a giant flesh disgusting monster which is the way i took that is his consciousness is evolving so quickly right. that his matter is trying to keep up yeah and it doesn't know what it's to do breaking so, reality yeah it's just it's just going completely but do you remember what he turns into a giant ba a baby a baby yeah a 2001 a space odyssey do become a space they become a space baby after, you know you know how it goes after they go through the portal and awaken to the next level of consciousness i thought there was a parallel there oh man there has to be and we'll talk about let's that talk, movie we'll talk felt about like that. it had some kubrick style shots no doubt like when it shows the facility, the way that it was just like ominously painting on structures and certain things. And anyway, so um, Tetsuo begins to awaken so much that it's like, it's like he can't even control it anymore. It's like killing everything around him. Yeah. These little psychic kids show up. They shatter the vials that um, Akira was in. And, yeah. and like with it being out of that fluid that was like containing and, and, and preserving the... Um, the you know his body parts his body parts yeah. they start to come together and this this white light starts appearing <laughs> akira starts awakening and his body is like reforming rapidly and then you see him appear in this strange form where he's like not fully human he's kind of like glowing red sort of yeah you know he's like this child body but he's like glowing and it's like that's the image that was being flashed into uh tetsuo's mind earlier in the beginning of the movie so he starts awakening and then the nuclear explosion starts happening. <laughs> it's like in, uh, in uh, 1988. 1988, it starts happening and it's like, oh my God, there's this whole scene of like, they're trying to, you know, rush to get out of it. It's know? like the big reveal that what actually happened in 1988 was Akira awakening. And now it's happening again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. It's hot. It's crazy. It's so the scientist, this, this was what I thought was so cool. The scientist, he's on his computer. His, his eyes are wide. He's like, he's like, I don't understand. The energy of the big bang is present mm -hmm. right here in front of us. And it's like, I think that's them telling you it's like as above, so below the macrocosm and the microcosm. Like he, he, he even said the creation is the same as the destruction, the beginning and the end, mm -hmm. the alpha and the omega. Yeah. He even said like, 
his energy is creating a new universe. Right. He's yeah. creating it's a the new energy uni- of the big bang. A yeah. new universe is a pocket universe is being created. Yeah. And it was like, I think how it resolves is they kind of like pull Tetsuo, uh, Tetsuo in and then the other characters escape. And the last shot of the movie was Tetsuo being pulled into that ascension and he awakens to that level. Even though he took the dark path, he still yes. ended up on Akira's, like being benevolent. And the last line of the movie was, I am Tetsuo. Mm-hmm. Which is it's like, like when Moses I spoke am. to the bush, what, you know, when he's speaking to this voice, God, like, what should I tell the people your name is? And he just said, I am. I am. Yeah. I am Tetsuo. He became a God. Which is so wild. And I really also want to talk about that whole, like, he took kind of the left hand path, but he, he still made, made it, it in the end. Yeah. I do want to talk about that too. So, that kind of that's how the movie ends. That kind of ties up the entire movie, and now we can now we can dive into some other stuff like what I was talking about with uh you know old government people that are <laughs> playing both sides, sitting on the fence. You know what I'm saying? Like that's obviously a parallel to something that's actually happening. Well, I, in the beginning, I said my dad reminds me of the real life Akira. Is he gonna ascend and bring? No, <laughs> but my point is, it, it, I can't help but think of that when the History Channel documentary just came out this week, the week we're recording this. Naturally, this will be out a month after we yeah, record yeah. it. You know, you know how it goes. We're recording this on August fifth. It just came out four days ago. Gear five comes out tonight. <sighs> oh my God! That's- Ryan's birthday's in two days. Yes, my birthday's in two days. But um, I got him straight now that we're getting so close. Heck yeah. He all, his fiance's birthday is the 6th. And this dude is always thinking her birthday is mine. My dad and brother are also the 6th. But, but did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, he remembers mine over his own fiance's. <laughs> That's the point that you have. <laughs> That's the point. You I might make... spend more time with you. <laughs> Damn. I, I, I mean, hey, I'll, I'll take it. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, it's, it's crazy. It reminds me of that because like it just came out and we saw this situation and I was there for a lot of this. I wasn't there the, the night of the- channel stuff. Yeah. I wasn't there for the night of the brain scan thing, but like you could see it on the TV and me having been there and meeting these people and knowing them and like talking to them about it at length while it was all going on off camera, like they were shook. You know, they, mm. they were seeing data that they truly, they were like, <laughs> you know, there's a line in the documentary with um, Andy, such a wonderful guy. There's, there's this shot where his eyes are wide and there's a text on the screen where like the producer's off camera, but you hear his voice and it says, producer, I have never seen your eyes so wide. <laughs> you know, like I think of Akira where the scientist is like, <laughs> he's on the computer and he's like, I don't understand this data suggesting this. Can this be real? Yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, yeah it is. You know? Yeah. And it just, it just reminded me of that. Like getting, getting this data of a new frontier of discovery into the fringe and the paranormal. And ironically, it was Colonel John Alexander who got my dad involved with the show. Come on now. That's so a wild like, I don't parallel. Know, just Akira to me was like, this is... This is really weird. Yeah, at its core, it's it's about like the evolution of consciousness and awakening. Right. You know, that's that's what the movie's about at its core, like psychic awakening and like there's all these shows and movies and things where when evolution of consciousness happens, there's always these psychic aspects that go right along with yeah. it. Always. I wonder why. I wonder why. I don't know. Let's <laughs> yeah, talk about it. Why you truth. think? <laughs> because it's the truth. And like the message of Akira, which I thought was really good, was yes, like let's let's be let's be very clear here. Like it is still an anime film, so it has action, it has gritty violence. Like it, it it's telling you the theme is this up here in the clouds. It's awakening. But then down here there's more, you know, action movie oriented stuff happening. Like I, I, I get that it's not for everybody. You, yeah. You always you know? have to have layers. You got to have a real story that's going on. And then you have to have the mystical story that's going on at the same right, time. Right. Right. Yeah. Kind of like as above, so below. Exactly. But anyway, my point is like, I liked the message of the movie that like, even though this kid is turning into this violent monster and he's destroying the city, that that's just, that's just anime. Right. Yeah. But the real message of the movie was there's an age of awakening coming, but like we all will awaken. Like the scientist said, like a young researcher told me the other day that he believes that this power will be the next step in human evolution and we'll all control it someday. I don't know if you guys remember but the way the History Channel thing ended with Dad, <laughs> the scientist at the end, they, they did a brain scan of Dad, obviously. And then they were interpreting the data with the neuroscientist on the call. And I thought this was really clever. I, I had no clue that they were going to have those kinds of discussions like this because I wasn't there. I was only on our property. And they basically said, like, his brain is normal. 
Mm-hmm. Any anybody could potentially do this. Like I I I liked that moment because it was like I feel like first of all it was a relief mm. on live TV for them to reveal through cutting edge EEG data that my dad's brain is normal, just yeah. like everybody else's. You know, yep. for the last sixteen to seventeen years, you know, thousands of people have told us we're crazy and all this oh, yeah. crap, and it's like boom. It's, no, it's he's not. schizophrenia. It's this. It's that. He's crazy. It's like. Really? Because the, the data shows he's completely normal. And second of all, he was brave enough to do that on TV. Absolutely. Like, I, I can't fathom the, you know, the, the nerves of that. But Oh, yeah. Thirdly, what I got from that was everybody can awaken to this level. Mm-hmm. They came right out and said it. Like, that means anybody can do this. And then the scientist, uh, uh, Travis Taylor, he ended with a joke. Like, yeah. well, I mean, if he really has this superpower and everybody can do it, then... And and it seems to be, you know, from getting into this theta alpha wave state, then, uh, you know, let's go. Like, I've always wanted to be a superhero and have super <laughs> That's how he ended it, remember? Yeah, he, he also explicitly said at one point that, like, if he has this power, we need to know how he has this power. So we can all do so it. So we can all do it. Like, he, he said that explicitly. Yeah. You know? And it's, we've always said that on this show, like, this, this stuff is this is something that anybody can access we're all born with this innate ability this is the nature of consciousness right we have consciousness already it's it's the truth of like what we are exactly and another thing that we've always been talking about on here is that like it's theta waves Theta yeah. waves is the key. Oh, dude, I was like, whoa, yeah, whoa, I was whoa, eating whoa, that up. Whoa. I was eating I was that like, up. We nailed that yes. from like the first episode. Exactly, because like they they showed the correlation that when he is when he's trying to put out a signal or whatever it is, when he's trying to put out his intentions to make these orbs appear, he's going into a theta wave state. Yeah, the, you could see all the different like charts with like the brain graphs, and the theta one was like. Off the charts. It was crazy. It, it was, was like Akira, bro. The <laughs> 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 They're getting the paranormal Every time data. you do that, it gets funnier. Because <laughs> he's frantic. He's always, there's these shots of him being frantic, like looking at the charts. You know it's what I mean? It's funny when you do it. What though. kind of computers are you typing on? <laughs> you got to see Akira. They're like, they're like 1988 versions of what they believe computers would have been in 2019 yeah. at like the max level. They yeah. look old, you know, but like. He, he, it's what it reminds me of, man. Like, it just made me think of Akira. Like, <laughs> also, it's the longest keyboard ever. Like, you're going like this. Dude, like, it's big. It's got yeah. like, you know, he's playing piano. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. He's playing on a huge piano. Yeah. But yeah, no, I thought that was amazing. It was like, first of all, we have been talking about the Theta Wave thing since realistically, probably the third episode. I want to say yeah. that's when we first started talking about Years it. Years ago. Why? Because the Monroe Institute put my family on that back in like, they didn't personally put us on it. It was people who were involved with them putting us on them. Yeah. Back in like 2015 or 2016. Right. And then we got involved with it. And, and, and like, I just, I just deduced the significance of the theta wave state. Like nobody came out and told me was like, you know, you need to train your brain to get into a theta. I just have a psychology degree and I thought about it and I was like, hmm, they're giving us all these binaural beats from the Monroe Institute. I want to, you know, I looked into them. I found out that it's supposed to induce theta waves and we just would talk about it. And like, we, we just felt that that was significant. And then the data revealed that like, that's the sauce. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, I mean, a lot of the things that we talked about early on was like, like, you know, monks, for instance, that reach those, those heightened meditative states. And when they do that, it's, it's theta wave, theta wave, theta wave. Right. And how they train like their entire lives to be able to access that instantly, instantaneously. And even some of them get to a point where they are constantly in a theta state. Right. Constantly, all the time, you know? And it's like, okay, if it's about meditation and centering your focus and getting in that theta wave state and all of these spiritual monks are doing this and all these gurus are doing this, all of these spiritual leaders, if you want to call them that, are doing this, there's something behind it. There's something behind There's it. something significant about it. And yeah. then you start to learn about the correlations between theta states and like dreaming, theta states and REM sleep. It's like, you know, we yeah. know that the, the dream realm when is significant. When you dream, you are in theta. Exactly. It's non-negotiable. We, we know that that is significant stuff. So it's like, it just started popping up all over the place. Theta, 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 theta. It's like we would talk about any topic around this metaphysical, mystical stuff, and it always pointed back to theta. Yeah. And that was one of the first things that 
that I tried of all of this like new age metaphysical stuff. Very early on, when we started talking about this, Ryan was like, you got to get into these data waves, bro. Uh And I was like, what the hell? Like, what's that? Like, you're like, what? What's up with it? And he's like, dude, trust me. I go to sleep every night to it. This is what it does. Blah, 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 blah. I tried it. And like immediately I noticed a major, major difference in my sleep, my energy, my mood. And then, you know, there are different theta waves that are for different express purposes. So theta waves is anything um, beneath, basically beneath eight hertz uh-huh. and above like four hertz. Yeah. And so the, you do have to have headphones for this. You do. Yeah. Because most I like. I think 20 hertz and below is, is you can't, the ear can't differentiate. Right. If, if it's played out of like a speaker or something, right, you're right. not really going to be able to hear it. But essentially with these like sub level frequencies, they can access if they vibrate because, you know, essentially how it works is like in each ear, the hertz are like slightly off and right. that causes them to clash and resonate in a very weird way. And you hear the difference. Exactly. Between the two frequencies. The difference makes that warbly effect. That The different because if you like take one of your earplugs out and then do the other one. It's just static, like a it's, static tone. I mean. And it's like just slightly different. It's that slight difference that causes that warble that right. actually has the effects. It like sends pulses through your brain. That's why they call them binaural beats because there is a tone in each ear. Yeah. Very important to know. When I first heard binaural beats, I was like, is it going to be this like, is whack. I was like, is it going to be like lo fi or like? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the, the very first moment I heard of it, I was like, whack. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. But then, then the Monroe stuff came around. And, and you know, that, that's, I know it's not theta waves, but around the same time, I started doing like the solfeggio frequencies, which are other sacred frequencies. That, yeah, that's different entirely. And it is. I listen to those every night, non negotiable. Same. I, I have for like basically two years, ever since you told me about it. And just a couple days ago, uh, we had a new person in our Discord. I believe it was Jess, um, who she came in and they were saying like they, they had issues with um, sleep paralysis. And I was, you know, saying, oh, I've had sleep paralysis like once a month uh, since I was like 12, blah, 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 all this stuff. And I was talking with them about it and all this stuff. And then I had this realization, like I haven't had sleep paralysis in a while and I have been trying to figure out why. And I think it's the theta waves and the the solfeggio frequencies because I do not go to sleep without them anymore. And it's very rare that I have sleep paralysis anymore. And if I'm honestly thinking about it, thinking back to the times in the past couple of years it has happened, even though it's rare, it may have been times I wasn't listening to those tones. Right. You know? It is uh, just confirmed. So shout out Jess. Oh, nice. Shout out, Jess. Shout out, Jess. No, yeah. that's, that's interesting. So, Fetchos are great, too, because, like, those are, those are specific uh, frequencies that, you, you know, we know about cymatics. We know you mm-hmm. put sand on a table and you play, if, if you play this same frequency, if you play 500 hertz a million times, mm-hmm. it will always make the same shape. Always. All of these frequencies have a dialed in archetypal shape it's like the way i see it in my mind is is like it's invisible it's it's in another realm but we can see like the ghost of it Mm -hmm. when we shadow yeah yeah, with 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 vibrating water or sand or 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 whatever and like imagine imagine that these frequencies every frequency ever um has a you could say a spiritual or ghost-like geometric precise archetypal shape Mm -hmm. that exists somewhere in a reality very near to us that we can't touch and we can't, you know, sense physically. What does that do on our consciousness when we play the nine sacred frequencies that have foundational uh, creation archetypal symbols that supposedly the whole universe is made of? Right, because it is important to say, you know, that like uh, even science backs up the fact that some of those sacred frequencies are the things that created right. everything. It's believed that they're the nine frequencies that, you know, the hold the universe together. Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah, non-negotiable. Listen to them every night. Yeah, think about it. I mean, with cymatics, it's like you can put a, a, a thin layer of water over a speaker and play the same frequency. It'll always make the same shape. 
it's water, so it's a little more volatile, but we're 70% water. But you're also doing it to your subconscious mind. Oh, absolutely. Those, those, those archetypal shapes, I believe, are, are recognized in the subconscious mind. So not only does it have the physical effects on the water in our body and our cells, mm-hmm. but also in the psychic mental layer of, of the emotional and the astral body, those healing energies and shapes are taking place in those realms simultaneously. Yeah. yeah. So it's like healing the mind and the body and the spirit, but it's subtle. Yeah. I mean, there's something super significant to that. There's no doubt about it. Right. It's significant. What I'd like to know is talking about the, one of the things I couldn't quite click with with Akira is, you know, how he, uh, Tetsuo kind of like took the left hand path, but he still reached the evolution of consciousness or reached awakening. You know, most of the mystic, mystic traditions and this esoteric stuff, you know, it talks about the purification of the soul. You have to spiral upwards and vibrate with love and light in order to reach that awakening. But, like, he was killing people and smashing people (laughs) with, like, cars and stuff. And then he, I mean, you know, I've thought maybe it was just, like, the compassion of Akira. That's what I was thinking. Seeing this, like, broken, hurting soul and, like, giving him a new start. Or, I don't know. I'm going to weigh in here. Okay. And I'm going to relate it to Star Wars. Oh! Okay. Let's go. Wait, Alex watched Star Wars? Episode six, when Luke uh, saves his father. Mm. His father, a really, really bad man who's gone around bashing people in the head and other parts of their body, cutting some hands off here and there. And what happened when he realized at the very end that he did not like that lifestyle and wanted to be... He Jedi. tossed the he tossed the emperor into the dumpster, and he enlightened and joined the force. He did, Bro. and what it, dude? Most gut wrenching line in that whole movie is when Luke is like, "We got to get out of here. I've got to save you." And Darth Vader says, "You already have." Yeah. Oh, and he and ascends to be a force ghost. He does, which means he ascended. Oh you know? my god! But like, Come on also, now. can we just acknowledge that you know we're really in the age of Aquarius when we got Alex bringing out Star Wars references. <laughs> Dude, we've been saying it a lot lately because of like the History Channel and all this great stuff happening, but we're in the, the best timeline. Yeah. We are in the we best timeline. It's all Alex happening is, before our eyes. Yeah, Alex is finally watching Star Wars and he has yet to watch the prequels and he is going to wait for us to watch the third one. All I needed to do was build a lightsaber. <laughs> <laughs> That's all he it goes took. and spends the two hundred dollars to build a lightsaber. He's like, "Yep, I'm, I'm gonna in. watch these movies." I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I could see that for sure. I, I that's that's kind of the the thing that made most sense to me is like the you know Akira has obviously reached that awakening, that compassion, that love and light, and in that second awakening or whatever, it's almost like second coming of Christ type thing. Kinda. It really it yeah. really is. He he has like that compassion and he sees, he sees like the potential in Tetsuo maybe. I didn't maybe. even think about that symbolism. I didn't even think about, it was a second coming. Oh yeah. That didn't even transfer in my brain. Second coming. I yeah, mean, he it literally, was. it happened it was... once and then he came back. Huh. He came back. <laughs> that's he, deep, dude. It, that movie's crazy. Yeah. That movie is crazy. But that's the thing that makes most sense to me is his compassion saved Tetsuo. That's what I was thinking too. And it's the same for Dark Oh, Man. he paid for his sins. How? <laughs> But but what do you mean? He he came back to life and exploded all over again. Oh, uh, Akira. Akira paid for right. Tetsuo's sins. Right, 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 right. What the? Well, I mean, I'm also <laughs> thinking it, when you said his compassion saved him, it was like Luke's compassion saved Darth Vader. Exactly. Like, like the way I see it is like consciousness, God, the, the you know the 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 eternal realm of the spirit, the truth, you know, the 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 loving force that like literally creates and binds the universe. I believe that forgiveness is a vibration that is truly unconditional. Mm. And like, I'm telling you, I have seen things being involved in this crazy life. I've seen people with stage four cancer just months away from death come over or we go to their house. Dad feels sorry for people, you know, especially back then he would just meet anybody. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's not like that anymore. He's too busy, but go see people literally like going to die in a few months. And they see orbs, 10 years later, they're still cancer-free. I've seen people... What's the important thing to note there, too? Because what did we say earlier? Anybody can access this. Right. 
So if everybody's vibrating with that, like, compassion and love, we can save each other. Right. Like, we that's, can literally. That's the whole point of all of it. Like, he, your, your dad is just so grounded in his belief. It's not even belief anymore. It's, it's knowing. It's known. It's, he, he, his he, knowledge. He was awakened into this before the rest of us. Absolutely. The, the, the knowing of the beings. That's, that's really what it is. The, the, one of the overarching themes of the mystic traditions is like your internal mind can influence the world around you. It right. does influence the world around you already. So all you have to do is know that. He flat out told me recently, he's like, you know, the way I, I was like, well, how do you see it going down, dad? Like we talk about this and, and, and you know, the alignment in 2026, this, that, how do you see it going down? Can you, can you picture it in your mind? And he's like, well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's about, it's about my dad is big on manifestation being real. Mm -hmm. I mean, we were talking about that yesterday, how things have been manifesting for you. Oh yeah. And I was like, dude, that's the kind of stuff my dad does. <laughs> like what was happening to you in the past month? It's been almost every day. Right. It, it, it it's real. You it know is. what I mean? I, I like, it, it's literally as simple as like Nick, Nick just got a new house and he was telling me like, man, I really wanted a grill, but I'm like, ah, I shouldn't spend the money on it. Gets there. Boom. His brother brings him a free grill. Yeah. He found it on the side of the road. It's just stuff like that. Like, my oh dad yeah. And then I was looking, um, like two days ago I was looking, I was like, man, I don't have any furniture in this room. I need to go on Amazon and see if I can find a futon. I was looking at this one specific futon. The next morning, Casey says, hey, my boss is moving out of his old place. He's going to bring by some furniture. He brought it over, and it was one of the exact futons I was looking at. That's what the I'm saying. The next day. That's it's like, like, huh? Rapid manifestation. Like snap yeah. of and, a finger. And, and it's not like that, that could be controlled or anything, but it's, it's, it's real. It happens. Yeah, absolutely. It's possible. I don't, I don't know. I, I mean, at this level of knowledge we have, it, it, it would be hard to do that on command. But that's the kind of stuff my dad does. Mm -hmm. And... um. It's just crazy. Like I, I, he, he was telling me uh, a few months ago, we were having a really deep chat about all this stuff. And he was like, I think that there's going to hit a point where everyone is awakened into this knowing of what these beings are and, and the reality of God. And we're going to all get together probably in prayer. And that doesn't mean, you know, we're all holding hands kumbaya. It's just the whole world having the knowing and actively seeking a better world. And he believes we're actually going to manifest a better world. I, I, yeah. I mean, that's, if we are in the best timeline, that's, that's the outcome. And it's like, there's two layers of action happening here. The first layer is it's destiny, and it's dictated by ancient prophecy, but also by the stars. Mm -hmm. You know, Age of Aquarius is coming. That, that, that's non-negotiable. Yeah, it's it, it's it, literally the stars are turning on this massive 26,000-year cycle that, like, we have no control whether we shift or not into this age. We could probably only delay it. Like, I think it's possible we delayed it in the 1960s. Mm. Different conversation. But then the second layer of that is we are not only the observer— but we are also the active participants and we are meeting the universe and the realm of the spirit halfway with our awakening into the knowledge of the spiritual. And we are also in another layer of dimensional action and operation. We're manifesting it. Yes. A thousand percent. It's both. It, yes. Both are happening simultaneously. I agree. That's, that's, that's how I see it. And I, I, I think like it's, it's only up to us to manif to freaking manifest a better world. So what we're saying is be like Akira. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just compassionate. He, he was, and, and that's another thing too, like visually and the way he was uh, shown was, was very compassionate. He was smiling. Mm -hmm. He was just calm and just like, you sweet, know, innocent little yeah, kid. Like walk with me, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. just like an innocent little heart of a child, you know, right. That sweet, innocent little kid. Yeah. Be like Akira. If you heard this and you haven't watched it, watch the movie. Watch it now. It's, it's, it's good. We, it's amazing. We had a, a guy in the Discord, shout out Liddy Kravitz. Yeah. I don't know how this happened. He was he was commenting in there like, I watched this movie. I was like, great, watch Akira. <laughs> and he's like, okay. And I'm hyping him up. Uh, I'm stuttering today. I'm hyping him up on it. Type into him like, you need to go watch this movie. It's hype. He comes back a few hours later and he's like, <laughs> this is it, my mind's on the floor. Yeah. Like I, I, I'm mind blown. Like I, amazing. It's one of those amazing movie. And then he's like, everybody else go watch. It. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those movies. It'll turn you yeah. into an yeah. evangelist. It's enlightening. It's enlightening. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all I got. I mean, yeah. Anything you guys want to get off your chest? Um, my brain is just, dude. It's been like. 
my brain is just fuzzy today. It's been a week of like Duncan Trussell. And then it's like dad went on Fox news. And then it's like history channel, history channel. And, and, and like everything around that, this, this excitement has like gotten me exhausted. Yeah. I feel you know you. what I mean. My brain is so I'm, I'm trying to fire on all cylinders today, but we need to put you, your brain in a vial so it can calm down <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know, yeah. it's, uh, it's pretty awesome seeing it all go down. It is. Are you kidding me? We we've been. It's been hyped up for years. Like this is like your family deserved this. Like the 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 vindication, the reassurance, the it's like a, a it, like I described it to you the other day. It's like finally a pin in all the pressure, just to relieve all the pressure and say like there's finally somebody out there that's telling our story the right way and doing right by us. Right. You know, you can relieve all that pressure and breathe easy finally. Right. Yeah. yeah. Last thing I want to say, I was just telling dad the other day, the morning after it aired, I was like, you know, for 16 years, we've come this far and we've had this big black shadow like haunting us. Like anytime we told our story, it was like the reality is there was this big negative, you know, public shaming and portrayal of us. And we've still pushed through this far. And I, I felt like, I was telling dad, like, I think the light has finally shined that shadow away. And it's like that, that cycle was closed and we're in like a new cycle now. And, and that's it, a beautiful way it, to put it. It feels much better now. Like the pressure is gone. It's just having fun. It's like the light cleansed all the darkness. Yeah. That's it feels beautiful. that way. That's beautiful. I love that. That's yeah. how it should feel. The bad is all gone and now you can just ruminate on the good. Yeah. And just keep trying to. You know, spread it, spread it and love, light, light, positivity and just have fun. Yeah. You know, so that's all I got. We love y'all. Love y'all. You know what it is. Come on over for dinner now. Come (laughs) (laughs) Practice your mudras. (laughs) Are you doing your mudra, boy? Yeah, we still get comments about mudra, man. Are you serious? (laughs) I'm the mudra, man. All right. We love y'all. Ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Bye, Bye, guys. guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to see more, check out our other videos. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Peace. Peace.